The rising cost of a four-year college degree is leading many to pursue alternative pathways to traditional higher education, from aviation to coding. We look at ways to pursue careers in some of the most in-demand industries. That and more, stay with us as we dive into your South Florida. Hi, I'm Pam Giganti. Welcome to Your South Florida. College graduates often earn higher salaries than those with just a high school diploma or GED, opening the door for greater opportunities. But with the rising cost of a four-year college and the burden of paying off student loans, traditional higher learning isn't always an option. This drives many to seek out vocational and technical schools that offer industry-driven career education and training in some of the fastest growing fields such as aviation or healthcare. As part of our recent town hall, we invited a panel of experts to discuss these alternatives to higher ed and the latest programs available that could help put you on a path to success. Henry, let's start with you. In January of 2019, Governor DeSantis issued an executive order to make Florida first in the nation for workforce education by 2030, later putting over $500 million towards workforce education in our state, including technical colleges, and the expansion of entrepreneurship education and training. So why don't you talk to us about some of those initiatives, what all that means, and why the renewed focus? Uh, we know that the pathways to economic and social mobility are very different. Um, one may explore a university trajectory, but one may equally explore a CT program that incidentally can stack up into a university degree. So it's about providing options. It's about providing choice. Uh, and choice sort of, again, does well by way of our residents if we provide viable and exciting alternatives. And so in January of 20, 000, uh, 2019, like you mentioned, the governor issued his executive order, which provided a North Star, a clear vision to get us to become number one in workforce education by 2030. And he put his money where his mouth is, uh, committing over 500 million, as you said, this past legislative session to workforce education and training programs. And within that, uh, doubling down on apprenticeship programs and apprenticeship programs that are connected to higher education, committing a $10 million grant opportunity for residents across the state, as well as entrepreneurship. Uh, and the governor and the commissioner, while they value skills training, they also know about the critical shortage of critical thinkers, excellent communicators, some of these more interpersonal and human skills. Uh, which entrepreneurship education sort of helps cultivate. So we wanted to try and both, again, address the skills gap, but know that there are other aspects to a well-ordered economy and society, uh, graduating democratic citizens and excellent critical thinkers, for which reason he put another 2 million behind apprenticeship or rather entrepreneurship programs. So it's really a holistic approach when you think about it, trying to remove every barrier conceivable to a higher education by providing our residents every opportunity to enter a high quality, well aligned CTE program like those that are offered at McFadder Technical College. Eric, I wanna to talk to you about, you know, what happened after COVID. And we know many workers were either furloughed or laid off during the height of the pandemic. They might be looking right. for a career change or ways to be more self-sufficient perhaps now more than ever. So, Talk about this importance of entrepreneurship that we just heard Henry talk about in the community and how the Center for Black Innovation is really helping in that arena. For sure. So one of the key things to remember about entrepreneurship is that it's it's being really impacted um, by, by COVID. A lot of people had to close their doors um, in, in the wake of COVID. Uh, but as we kind of move forward uh, as a state, into what is gonna start being kind of this resurgence of people getting out there and trying new ideas, uh, some of these programs are going to be vital in making sure that we have clear pathways in order to create businesses. So there's a lot of key fundamental things uh, that people need to have in order to uh, create the businesses that they're attempting to do, uh, one of them being capital, but a lot of them is just being resources and knowledge in, a, in, in the ability to, to create the businesses that they're seeking to do. Uh, one of the things that the center is specifically doing uh, is guiding people through that process, specifically people who are looking for repeatable, scalable um, and profitable business models. Um, these kind of follow the traditional uh, trajectory of a startup. Uh, so tech companies that are startups, uh, but also outside of that, innovation is not 
uh, just simply people who are in technology. Um, it casts a wide uh, net into people who are simply trying to find a different and newer way to do things. Uh, so the center uh, goes about uh, helping out with that by giving people both foundational knowledge in uh, startups that start with that, uh, but then move forward more firmly into kind of the hard skills of how do you do your marketing? Um, how do you use data in order to build a strong infrastructure? How do you build a team uh, in order to do uh, the, the type of work that you're attempting to do? And then moving into kind of how do you either get investment or how do you start to build up revenue uh, by specifically targeting your audience? So there's a couple of different ways to go about it. Uh, but uh, the center is attacking them from, a, from a, a holistic perspective of trying to make sure that we hit every single uh, prospect that an entrepreneur needs to have in order to grow. Uh, but also know that growth is, is uh, entrepreneurship is not just technology. Uh, it spans wider than that. Yeah, and Jeanette, let's go back to what Henry was talking about with McFadder. He mentioned you, you're the, the director there, and then also hard skills, as we just heard from Eric. So let's talk about some of the most in-demand industries right now. What are some of the most sought-after courses that McFadder is offering? And have you noticed more of an interest from potential students uh, since before the pandemic? So when the pandemic first hit, um, McFadder, like Atlantic and Sheridan, the other two tech colleges here in the in the county, initially saw a drop in enrollment, which makes a lot of sense. People were dealing with other situations, um, other challenges. As the pandemic has gone on here in the spring, as we're seeing increases in the vaccination rates, all of that enrollment is coming back. Some of it is coming back in industries that were strong pre-COVID, um, nursing, firefighting, EMT, um, network support. But there are also some areas where we're seeing an increase that we didn't see quite as much pre-COVID. For example, um, HVAC, our commercial vehicle driving program down at Sheridan has always been popular and is bursting at the seams. We've also got a lot of interest in our, in our construction programs like electrical and welding. And interestingly, you mentioned entrepreneurship. We've actually seen here at McFadder um, a recent increase in programs that have actually career-wise temporarily taken a hit. And one of the ones that occurs to me is photography. Uh, commercial photographers were particularly hard hit by COVID, and yet our enrollment in our photography program is very strong. And what we're hearing from our students is they are trying to position themselves as entrepreneurs running their own businesses once we come out of the pandemic. So we've even seen things like that where currently the market is weak, but they know that as soon as we come out of this, they will be strong and positioned to run their own, run their own businesses. Well, one industry that continues to grow is aviation. Package delivery, cargo continues to increase. Passenger air travel numbers we are starting to see go back up again after more people are becoming vaccinated against COVID-19. So with that growth, the demand for skilled workers continues to rise. And recently I had the opportunity to visit George T. Baker Aviation in Miami to get an inside look at how they are helping to prepare this next generation of workers. Located next to Miami International Airport, George T. Baker Aviation Technical College is helping prepare its students for in-demand careers in aviation with courses from aerospace science to aircraft maintenance. My name is Gabriel Sosa and I'm taking the airframe course right now. The airframe course is basically everything except the engine. So, you know, you have your wings, you know, your landing gear, the tires, the systems like hydraulics and pneumatic systems, you know, antennas, electronics, everything apart from the engine. My name is Ifani Ibena, and I'm in the airframe uh, program. Well, I've always uh, fueled planes at the airport. I did that for like five years, so while I was fueling the airplanes, so I kind of like developed interest in uh, working on the planes and trying to fix the plane, and uh, I think it's fascinating. I just thought, you know, you know, fixing the airplanes would be something, you know, huge and something I think I can do. And right now, you know, I'm on my way trying to, you know, get it done. My name is Kamisha Warren. I'm in the power plant course. It's basically pertaining to the functionality of a turbine engine or a reciprocating engine. It deals with the engine itself, making sure that it is functioning properly for flight. Baker Aviation graduate Carlos Gonzalez is now an instructor there, teaching students the skills they'll need for this rapidly evolving industry. From the time that I started in, in 84, when I started, to now, it has changed dramatically. 
everything that I have learned through my years of experience, some of it is not, not even being used anymore because the, the new airplane 787 is it's all completely changed. A lot of those systems are completely 100% different. When they first start with my classes, this is the first time introducing them to turbine engines especially. They come in and they're all like worry and stress. Oh my God, this class is gonna be impossible for me to understand. And then as we get them, it's like baby steps that we take through. And then by the time we get to the end of the class, I have like a personal interview with them. And it's funny because then they go, oh, but it's so easy, it was so easy. I go, yeah, it's easy now since somebody explained it to you and we went through the whole process, which, which in reality is not that difficult, but it could be overwhelming if you don't have somebody instructing you the, the proper procedures and the proper ways of doing things. I'm someone who likes to try new things. So I basically tried it out and it turned out to be a passion of mine. It's helped me with character development, discipline. So I definitely look at it as a blessing. Let's talk about the diversity of the student body because you have more females in the program now than ever before, right? It has increased incredibly in the past, I would say about three years. I've seen it go up. I would think right now we're running at about maybe 20% are females. And it's actually great that, that has, that's been happening because the industry is demanding more females. They're more attentive to detail. Mm -hmm. And this industry is all about detail because those are the things that actually prevent accidents from happening. In addition to its adult education courses, Baker Aviation provides dual enrollment classes for Miami-Dade County Public High School students, giving them a head start to a solid career. The advantage of having this type of program for high school students to be able to come here, uh, they don't pay nothing out of their pocket, everything is free for them, and by the time they finish high school, they could actually have a high school diploma and have at least partial certification either a power plant license or an airframe license. That means they could actually start working in the field right away. And right now the field is actually acquiring a lot of these students. They're offering them 20 to $25 an hour. I mean, that's unheard of. Uh, that's really good money, for, especially for them, to help them with, you know, with their studies. If they want to go to college, they could actually help out paying for the college. Right now for the major airlines, the average salary for top paid mechanic, which is usually takes about five to seven years, is over $100,000 a year. When they come here, it's like they want to be here. It's not like they're being forced to go. And even with the high school program, they, they come here and they, they express themselves like they want to be here. It's not like, mom, I got to go to school, I got homework, no, no. And here they, they love to come here. And that makes a big difference. It makes it easier on the instructors. It's, it's an incredible program. Such an incredible program there. It was great to spend the afternoon there. I personally learned a lot about these programs that have high school students and also have adult learners. So Jeanette, let's talk about that. Why don't you explain to us kind of what dual enrollment is and how important that can really be for a student to take advantage and get a head start. Sure. So you heard it mentioned in the package, dual enrollment is something that's available for high school students here in Florida. People are very familiar with dual enrollment. For example, you might go to Broward College and take an English class or a math class. Not as many people are as aware of what we call career dual enrollment. And that's when the students come to one of the technical colleges for focused study in one of our technical programs. Now, the technical programs for adults are very affordable, but they're not free. They're help, it's help supported by tax dollars. But for our high school students, if you career dual enroll, everything is free of charge. And again, as you heard in the package, what happens as a result is the student can complete high school, uh, not only with their high school diploma, but also with a technical college diploma. Here in Broward County, there are two different ways to access dual enrollment. Students can remain at their home boundary high school and come to us usually in their junior or senior year for part of the day for their technical program. In that case, they usually don't necessarily complete the tech program, but they get far into it. Or they can come to one of our technical high schools. All three technical colleges, Atlantic, McFadder, and Sheridan, have a full technical high school on their campus where each of the, each of the three technical high schools enrolls 600 students. They take their academics with us and they take their full technical program. So most of our technical high school students 
complete the program. As a result of that, they also earn industry certifications in their fields. And where this becomes really, really beneficial for the students is the multiple pathways that are open to them when they leave us. And one of the great examples I usually give is with practical nursing. So a student can come through our career dual enrollment program as a high school student, take a practical nursing post-secondary program completely free of charge. They graduate high school. As long as they've passed the NCLEX, they are now a licensed practical nurse. Many of them can go straight to work in the field. Um, in Florida right now, the average salary for practical nurse is more than $45,000. So they can come right out of high school making that kind of money. They could choose that they want to move immediately on to their RN. So for example, they may go to Broward College and take the RN program, taking not only their knowledge that they gained, they gained with us, but also articulated credits. So they start out the RN program with many credits granted to them because of what they did with us. Or you have the student who, let's say, wants to go on and become a doctor or a nurse practitioner they go off to one of the state universities, again, as a licensed nurse, not only as they are a pre-med student, do they have two years of working with, with patients, so they are ahead academically, but they can also work part-time in their field nursing, making $20, $25 an hour and help put themselves through college that way. So it really does open up significant choices to the students once they leave us. You know, absolutely. And touch on the fact quickly, too, that students after high school, if they want to go to the technical college, can use Bright Futures and Florida prepaid money as well, correct? Correct. Both adult students who've been out of school for a while and high school students who just recently graduated, the tech colleges, in addition to Pell Grants being available, we are included in the Bright Futures program and the Florida prepaid completely. So all of those funding sources are fully available to any students who come to the technical colleges. So Henry, we've talked about, you know, Jeanette just mentioned licensed practical nursing. Uh, we talked about aviation. Looking statewide, let's talk about what are some of the most in-demand fields right now. What are you seeing out there and what is it that the Get There Florida initiative is really trying to do to help fill these positions? The Get There campaign, if everyone can take a minute and visit gettherefl.com, um, was launched back in September by the governor and by the commissioner in response to the COVID pandemic, uh, knowing that many people have been impacted, uh, knowing that many residents found themselves without viable employment, uh, needing high skills, technical skills into a job that can be less susceptible to economic disruption. And the Get There campaign is an attempt to sort of elevate what those programs are. Uh, not only that, uh, the Get There campaign comes with resources. Uh, the legislature has funded this year, and it's waiting uh, Governor DeSantis' signature at the moment, uh, $35 million for the Open Door Grant. Uh, this is uh, money from the uh, CARES Act Fund appropriated through the legislature for anybody that would like to enter any of these programs uh, seeking a high priority, high value CTE degree or certificate. The Open Door Grant uh, provides uh, what Pell or what federal aid cannot provide for. So if there is for some reason um, an inability of a resident to receive full Pell or full financial aid, this is not loans. These, don't, these monies do not have to be repaid. If you are not able to receive full Pell for your program, the state is effectively going to kick in what is left on the table. So if you need help, if you need assistance, if you want to talk to me or one of our state supervisors about where to go and what industry to uh, to get into, visit that website, gettherefl.com. And now, Pam, to answer your question, the hottest industries are aviation uh, uh, here in the state of Florida, especially uh, the Space Coast. Uh, and not just airframe and power plant mechanic like Baker sort of traditionally trains for. Aviation needs IT people, so cybersecurity, um, as well as other kind of cloud-based technology solutions for that aviation cluster uh, is really, really vibrant at the moment. Healthcare is a staple, uh, and we're looking uh, to a resurgence in hospitality, but those kinds of jobs, again, are more likely to be susceptible to economic disruption. So within hospitality, you see the sector now trying to pivot uh, into more entrepreneurial pathways. Uh, so IT, healthcare, financial technology, aviation, uh, and again, the construction trades, uh, especially as we think about the large infrastructure investments that may be coming down the pike. Uh, those are all phenomenal and viable 
industries to explore uh, a career pathway in. And I would be remiss, frankly, Pam, if I didn't plug teachers and education. Uh, we need teachers in the state of Florida. Uh, we know that's a vocation. We know in some sense that's a sacrifice, but thankfully the governor and the commissioner passed historic teacher pay increases, taking us from you know bottom 30 or 40 to number five or six in the nation in terms of how well our teachers are paid in Florida. So I would be remiss if I didn't say that from the Department of Ed's perspective that we need we need more educators out there. Let's go right to Eric because your background is data and design. Talk about what the computer yeah. field looks like right now, what you're working on, and I'm sure you are a teacher in many aspects to people too who are looking to kind of take all those skills and, and use them in an entrepreneurial way, correct? Correct. So I currently teach at Watson Institute um, as a data science uh, and it's in social impact, and then also um, part-time at University of Miami for design. And the biggest thing that uh, should be taken in consideration is that there's always going to be more things to do in IT. And both of those positions, both using data and using design, are not only um, lower, are getting the bar lowered um, in order to enter into them, but they will always be relevant and they will always play a part in not only IT specifically, but across industries in general. Um, every single industry needs to better utilize data uh, as they continue to grow. So that you'll continue to see more and more uh, positions that utilize data in them, even if they don't use that, say that in their position. Um, you're having managers who need to leverage data. If you're in a spreadsheet, you're using data, um, maybe uh, in, a, in a more simple format or a simple manner, um, but people are learning to use that at higher degrees. We call them power users in order to um, start leveling up how they utilize data in their fields. Uh, so as I am teaching people and as I'm working in the center, I'm seeing there, there's a more and more desire for people to leverage technology in their specific fields. Uh, so as kind of Henry was pointing out, if we go back into you know, aspects of hospitality, I have two founders right now that are working specifically in hospitality to uh, operate their businesses. Uh, and they are attempting to leverage platforms in order to understand how we can uh, be in hospitality a little bit more um, with a technical lens. So that is always interesting to see. And you're gonna start seeing that across different industries, uh, regardless, uh, not only in this state, but across the nation. I know you're at the Center for Black Innovation, but go back to your core, which was Code Fever Miami. Talk about yes. coding. How hot is that right now? And it, and it remains a hot industry, correct? Yeah, so software development is, is, is uh, it's never not gonna be hot. <laughs> there's, there's always gonna be someone um, trying to do software development in some form or fashion that might change a little bit over time. Uh, so in the center's uh, history, uh, we have focused specifically on teaching kids how to code through schools. Um, so that was focusing on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, basic uh, la layers that are needed in order to do web development. And that um, initial uh, coding that you teach, that we that we taught uh, in doing that sets the foundation for them to learn uh, so much more. So going into those aspects of data analysis that I was talking about, those are program. There's Python and R that are programming languages that are built on top of that. Uh, then we start going into um, other aspects uh, that also use uh, JavaScript in order to build out applications. When we start talking about AR uh, and VR, those are languages that are alongside those. They may be a little bit more difficult uh, to get into, but HTML, CSS, and JavaScript have always been kind of the gateway into those um, more difficult programming languages uh, for, for children. So that has always been uh, something that the center has focused on, uh, and we'll continue to do that as we kind of move forward. It's been difficult uh, with COVID, obviously, uh, not being able to go into schools and speak with kids and, and work with them hand to hand, and that's going to be the challenge moving forward. How do we continue to assist uh, youth and, and children uh, as we continue to move forward while at the same time uh, being able to reach them where they're at uh, and reach them where they're at, not just physically, but also um, from their perspective and mentally. Jeanette, let's talk about McFadder and how it helps its students not only to get the certification for those jobs and the training for jobs, but how do they get into placement and actually get a job? Is it through partnerships that you have with companies that are waiting with open arms for those trained uh, students and their new employees, if you will? It's all of the above. You know, we start, as you just said, we start by making sure they've been educated 
with a top-notch education. We also have a program that funds reimbursements to them when they pass the industry certifications that are so valuable in their field. So we're able to help them get their industry certifications basically for free. That, that equips them to leave us with the highest skill set possible. Then we layer in the partnerships that exist between our, instru our program instructors who are all professionals who have worked in the field um, and the partnerships they have. Each of our technical programs has an industry advisory council. Those, those individuals help provide jobs to our graduates. They help provide internships to our students while they're still with us. And then the final piece we layer onto that in addition to what they get from those connections with their instructors is each of the three tech colleges here in Broward has our alumni association and a career services team. Those teams work with students as they're preparing to graduate again, completely free of charge, with resume building, they practice job interviewing skills, they help them find jobs, they learn how to job search, we connect them through networking and mentorships. Um, part, of our, part of our accreditation and funding is based on our success in getting students jobs, so we want to be sure that every single one of them doesn't just come and get an education from us, but actually gets the job. It benefits them by allowing this multi-pronged approach of the teacher providing the excellent education, the funding incentive to get that certification, and then this team that works with them once they leave us. The other thing we make available to all of our graduates, um, as we've seen certainly with COVID, these services, the job services of the resume, the job hunt, the connections to potential job uh, databases, that's available to our graduates forever. So they may leave us and 10 years later need to change fields. They can come back to us and re-tap into all of those services again for free as part of the service we provide to all of our alumni. Let's. This next question is really for the three of you and anybody can jump in here, but let's talk about what has happened with COVID and when we all had to pivot and go to working remotely. How has that changed the landscape going forward? And Eric, I see you nodding. Why don't you start? There's been a huge influx of people looking for certifications to, to, to feel validated, right? So we have a, a lot of people that come in with the idea of, if I get this certification, I should have the requisite knowledge in order to be able to get this job. Well, certifications are kind of half the battle. Um, Jeanette kind of spoke to, they have these associations, they have groups of people that assist in helping you kind of go and get the job. Because it, it, at one point, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a skills gap. But then the other half of it is that there needs to be relationship building and there needs to be uh, um, uh, professional development in order to actually secure the job at the end of the day. Um, hard skills are a huge part of what it means to be in technology, right? If you don't know how to code, people are not going to hire you. But if you don't know how to have a conversation, if you don't know how to communicate what you're coding, if you don't know how to talk to other people on your team, you can't get a job either. So that part of the battle is not only going through and getting these certifications, but it's also understanding to learn the requisite soft skills that allow you to kind of progress as you move forward. So some of that could be getting gotten through certifications, but the other part still has to happen a lot through, you know, meeting and talking to people and developing your professional, uh, doing that professional development um, online, uh, because it can't happen in person, at least uh, it will probably very soon as COVID starts to come down, um, but it has to happen online uh, throughout this whole entire COVID period where you had to reach out through a LinkedIn or you had to cold email people and you had to ask for advice. And that's very daunting for a lot of people just entering into the workforce. You can watch our full town hall on our Facebook page at your South FL. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.